This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Rola. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping News, the Minister for Grand Bahama confirming that a major project is in the works for the West Grand Bahama District. For years, residents of that area have complained about the challenging road conditions during adverse weather conditions. But tonight, the Minister says relief is now in sight. Natalie Martinborough has the story. After some extensive research, the government plans to move ahead with the construction of a bridge at the Fishing Hole Road. According to Minister for Grand Bahama, Dr. Michael Davo, this major infrastructural project should unfold soon. Well, I'm pleased to inform the residents of Grand Bahama that uh, all of the engineering preparatory work uh, for the Fishing Hole Road Bridge is completed. Uh, the actual drawings and preliminary drawings uh, was forwarded to the Ministry of Works. All of the uh, hydrostatic as well as uh, the structural components necessary for it is completed. Uh, it went out to tender. I understand that the tender process is completed and uh, I am very very pleased to report that we should have a contract signed uh, b b before the end of this year, God willing. Dr. Davil says this bridge at the Fishing Hole Road will be quite different from the Jack Hayward Bridge on the Grand Bahama Highway. He says the Fishing Hole Road Bridge will be some 13 feet high compared to 30 feet for the Jack Hayward Bridge. Nonetheless, he says the West Grand Bahama Bridge will be able to accommodate greater loads for those traversing that major thoroughfare. Uh, there is some utility infrastructure that exists that's been there for many, many years that connects water supply from uh, the city of Freeport to West Grand Bahama. So in the design, uh, that must be incorporated. Uh, you will realize that there is the uh, electricity poles that's coming all the way from West End to the Grand Bahama Power Company. Uh, that will remain. Davil says he hopes the bridge brings relief to Grand Bahama residents, particularly those in the West Grand Bahama District. It's something we've been talking about for more than 15 years. Uh, at the last uh, 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 hurricane, that passed through, it took us almost two days before we can cross uh, the, uh, the Hawksville Creek. Uh, that will be a thing of the past uh, and uh, all of the necessary emergency medical supplies that are essential uh, for the safety of the residents of West Grand Bahama during a tropical storm, hurricane or even flooding, uh, that will be something that we are so relieved on and uh, it will definitely change the way how the residents of West Grand Bahama access the services here in Grand Bahama. Natalie Martin, ZNS Network News. Well, the public debate continues about a reported proposal for a hike in power rates on Grand Bahama. This time, a local activist joined by others say they are about to take their fight against this latest move by the Grand Bahama Power Company to the people. Joan Davis Roll has this report. There's no way that we could stand by and allow this to happen. Local activist Troy Gavi is upset. He is fuming over the fact that Grand Bahama Power Company has submitted a proposal to the Grand Bahama Port Authority for an increase in power rates here on Grand Bahama, an island where the unemployment rate remains in double digits. June of 2014, a barrel of oil was $115 per barrel. In October, on October 16th of 2014, a barrel of oil was $82.60. This morning, the barrel of oil is $48.80. You are looking like almost like a 70% decrease in the barrel of oil. Freeport Power, Grand Bahama Power, Emera has never reduced their price. They have never given the consumers an opportunity to try to save on their power bill. And now, it hurt me last night when I see them making inroads to the Grand Bahama Port Authority to ask for increase. Gavi says enough is enough. I'm sending a plea out to Mr. President Ian Rool of the Grand Bahama Port Authority and their board of directors to please do not, do not grant this increase. The people can't take it. Gavi along with fellow activists Kendall Colbrook and Etienne Farkasen are calling for action. We're going to call on all the industrial, corporate, and residents of this island to come out now and join more now than ever to create a stance in this island to let them know that the people are the voice of this country. I'm Floyd, Francis, Jean, five missing boys, and it still hasn't upset this community. What do we have to do? These people will not listen to you until we come together in numbers. 
Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at Mary Ann's, we will be meeting. If you have an organization, if you want to be a part of this movement, meet us there. We have to show them that we can become unified. I call on the government to come to our rescue and help us before we all perish under the heavy load. John Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Well, the Grand Bahama Power Company is responding tonight to what they call misinformation regarding the company's proposed rate adjustments that have been filed with their regulator, the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Now, officials called a press conference this afternoon to clarify the situation. Kimberly Mullings has the story. The Grand Bahama Power Company addressing reports circulating regarding the company's proposed rate filing, which is currently before the Grand Bahama Port Authority. The power company is mandated to submit rate filing adjustments to their regulator every three years, which doesn't necessarily mean a rate increase. Filter Grant, Director of Resource Management in Dispatch and Stakeholder Relations. We want to urge the public not to be misled by individuals that are using this to push their personal agendas and communicating information that is out of context and that's p painting a picture that's not accurate and misleading. Firstly, the resource management director says it is misleading to speak about the power bill without discussing what is considered the all-in rate. There are two parts that comprise your bill. It's the base rate and the fuel charge. You have to talk about them together because when you come to GB Power, you don't have the option of paying one versus the other. The proposed rate for 2016 through 2018 does not propose an increase to the total cost of energy for 85% of Grand Bahama Power Company customers. Since 2011, we've been working extremely hard to reduce our operating costs improve our internal operating efficiencies, improve our heat rate, reliability, level of customer service, and we've also implemented a fuel hedging program. Now, our fuel hedging program, coupled with the internal um, operating efficiencies and the current cost of fuel in the market, has allowed us to see a 25% decrease in our fuel charge based over last year. With that said, the Grand Bahama Power Company believes that it can maintain stability in fuel charge for the next three years. On the issue of fuel cost, Grant says the overall price of electricity that customers pay is expected to return to the 2008 figures. We think this is a very good story because we've worked hard to do this to maintain our commitment to customers to maintain cost stability without sacrificing efficiency reliability, or customer service. The Grand Bauer Power Company says that 85% of their residential customers will avoid an increase in the proposed rate adjustments. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, there's more news right after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. Welcome back. Tonight, as we close out our series, Community Builders, we will introduce you to the fifth person to be honored tonight at the banquet for years of committed service to the Southern District of Grand Bahama and to the island as a whole. The recognition banquet is slated for the Grand Lucine Resort. Sabrina Brown has more. He's a prominent member of the clergy. Reverend Peter Pinder, Senior Pastor of Zion Baptist Church in Freeport and President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, started out in Christian ministry at a young age. By the age of uh, 15, the year when the church was dedicated, I had actually became the assistant to the afternoon Sunday school director because we had Sunday school in the morning and in the afternoon, but there were different persons responsible. And, and so I was, I was assisting the leader of the afternoon Sunday school. Reverend Pinder later moved to Florida to attend college, and upon his return, he continued to assist with the development of the Upper Zion Baptist Church in Pinder's Point. He went on to become an ordained minister. Reverend Pinder also served as executive secretary of both the Zion Convention and the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship. My Involvement in the Caribbean Baptist Fellowship led me to become involved in the Baptist World Alliance. So I became a regional secretary of the Baptist World Alliance and started traveling the world. And so for 15 years, uh, I was traveling the Caribbean and the world, uh, representing the Caribbean. The leader of the local Christian community is serving as president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council for the second time. For the first time, I was... Uh, 2024 and I was not a minister at the time 
In fact, when I was nominated, they had to go check the Constitution to see if I was eligible to be president. Reverend Pender says he's pleased to be among those being honored by the Upper Zion Baptist Church. I believe that I've made a contribution to uh, the life of the church in Grand Bahama, in the Bahamas and, and the wider world. And so I am honored to, to have been chosen. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. While well, recovery efforts continuing in the south and central Bahamas, another church is answering the call and is attempting to deliver some relief to residents in the affected areas. Our Joan Davis Roll has this report. It is a part of fulfilling their Christian mission as Central Church of God here on Grand Bahama join their counterparts in the rest of the Bahamas to help persons living on the hurricane-devastated islands in the southern Bahamas. An assortment of items including food and clothing all headed to the islands in the south. Pastor of Central Church of God, Reverend Stephen Dean. We are here at the Central Church of God. Um, uh, we usually run a free flea market during the month of December. And uh, of course, our benevolence leader um, in this year have decided that we will divide uh, our income, whatever we are now geared towards the December um, free flea market, we would divide it since there is a greater need in the southern Bahamas. And um, so what we've done was to take a portion of what we were preparing for December session and we are going to send it down to those persons who are in need. As the restoration efforts continue, Pastor Dean says their thoughts and prayers are with those affected by this recent natural disaster. Our administrative bishop, Dr. Moses Johnson, from the Church of God has already, he and a team of his um, executives, has already visited the Southern Bahamas, several of the islands, and um, has, you know, already made a, a donation, financial donation to the NEMA Foundation. And so what we are doing here is really on a smaller scale through our local church benevolence department. And um, of course, I must say as pastor, I am very proud to have, um, to be associated with our sister Jane Starr, who is the benevolence leader, and uh, her team of ladies. This is just two of them here with us today, but she has a whole team of ladies who work with her, and they do a tremendous job. Members of Central Church of God here in Grand Bahama say they are thrilled to be God's hands extended. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Joan. Well, one of the island's leading hardware stores also making a significant donation to hurricane relief victims in the south and the central Bahamas. Store owner Don Roberts presenting a check to the Salvation Army that represents a portion of the sales at the store on October 10th. We're pleased to present this check to the Salvation Army, which was derived from a percentage of our sales on Saturday, October the 10th, 2015 in support of those affected in the southeastern Bahamas by Hurricane Joaquin. We sincerely hope that this donation will help to alleviate some of the hardships suffered by our fellow Bahamians. Roger Compton of the Salvation Army accepting the financial donation. He says he is touched by Dolly Madison's commitment to assisting those in need. Um, we've been there, we've seen the flooding, we've seen uh, the houses that are, some of them are in almost total disrepair, but uh, we're doing what we can. And I thank uh, Mr. Roberts even for this check and even other offers to help maybe get um, some manufacturers, Whirlpool and other sponsors possibly on board to uh, bring in appliances. Well, it was a busy month for groups involved in the fight against cancer. They pulled out all the stops as they mounted various educational campaigns in the battle against various forms of the disease. The Cancer Society on Grand Bahama also hosted their very first pink party under the theme Cupcakes and Cocktails, celebrating those who have survived cancer. Kimberly Mullins takes a look. The Pink Party was one of the events organized by the Grand Bahama Cancer Society Hope Ball Gala Committee during the month of October. It was held at the Grand Lucayan and Grand Bahamians turned out to support the fight against cancer. Co-hosts Omega and Alexis Pelicanos both considered it a pleasure to be able to host the very first Pink Party. We've both been touched by cancer in some way by um, 
persons close to us being afflicted, okay? So when the call came, um, we were ready and willing, very willing to support. We now have an opportunity to come together and celebrate the lives of those people who have made it through. Cancer is something that's very near and dear to me as well, having lost my father last year of cancer, of lung cancer, and so I am so excited to be a part of this in any way, shape, or form I can help. I'm here to do that, and I'm excited. President of the Cancer Society in the Bahamas, Laverne Wild Goose, commended the Grand Bahama branch for organizing the Pink Party because the event allowed the public and the society to interact on an intimate level. We have to work hard in order to raise funds and to um, raise awareness. We raise funds to support cancer patients. And I must say here now, all funds um, raised in Grand Bahama or any other islands stays on the island to support um, the patients. Okay, and so awareness and to raise funds. So it's just awesome. They're doing a wonderful, wonderful job in Grand Bahama. A member of the Grand Bahama Cancer Society Hope Ball Gala Committee, Dulcie Darling, is a stage four metastatic breast cancer fighter. She knows firsthand how the funds raised from events like the Pink Party go toward assisting cancer patients. They provide support mentally. They provide support physically. They also provide financial support to patients who are going into Nassau, who may need treatment, who may need tickets to fly into Nassau. There are a number of things that the Cancer Society do. So all of the funds that we raise here tonight go directly to them to assist cancer patients. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Kimmel. As Breast Cancer Awareness Month comes to an end this weekend, the Grand Bahama Cancer Society Hope Ball Committee will be hosting a free-for-all health fair on the grounds of Family Guardian Insurance Company at the Regency Center tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And now it is time to ask the doctor. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. Welcome. Daniel asked a question yesterday regarding his eczema and how he can get relief. So to answer your question, Daniel, eczema treatment depends largely on the severity of symptoms. Your doctor may offer you treatment options or refer you to a dermatologist, which is a doctor who specializes in diseases of the skin. The best way to treat eczema is to take good care of your skin. Here are some suggestions. For mild outbreaks, over-the-counter creams and ointments that contain a low dose of steroids like hydrocortisone can help with inflammation and antihistamines like Benadryl can help relieve the itching. For more serious outbreaks, your doctor may prescribe a stronger topical steroid cream or use ultraviolet light therapy to control the symptoms. In order for your prescription medications to be most effective, proper bathing and moisturizing routines are required. You should also be taking warm, not hot baths or showers and immediately applying a fragrance-free moisturizer to keep the affected skin moist. Wearing cotton clothing, sleeping with a humidifier, and avoiding the use of products with harsh chemicals can be helpful as well. If you have a question regarding a specific rash or skin condition, please email askthedrbahamas at gmail.com. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. And don't forget, Daylight Savings Time is here again, and so before going to bed tomorrow night, you should set all time pieces back one hour. And he's ready to tease me about the Dolphins game. <laughs> Stay with us, we're kind of live born as a check on sports when we return. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Sports and Ricardo Live One tonight. This one goes out to McPhail and Perlene Mortimer of Mortimer's Long Island. They are here and celebrating 71 years of marital bliss. Want to say congratulations to you. Hope you guys are having a good one tonight. Well, the kids in Grand Turtle Key Abaco are playing flag football, and Megan Shepard has got this one covered for you. The Abaco Youth Flag Football Association in its third season of play and continues to grow across the island. Coach of the Falcons team, Michael Sawyer, noting that the association began with just three teams and now six communities have gotten on board. We actually won the championships in the, uh, the inaugural season. Uh, we swept, the, swept all the divisions. And then uh, last year they added another division, which we lost. We went undefeated for two years and lost in the championship game, you know, but uh, the Pee Wees, uh, they came back in, um, after an 18 point deficit, they came back and made it a dog, a dog fight, so they showed some heart and resiliency, you know, at such a young, you know, you talk about six to nine year olds, and uh, 
but they're, they're ready for it this year. Soria notes that the Falcons did not become champs overnight, and it took a lot of hard work and commitment. Because a lot of times, you know, the kids are a little not really into practice sometimes, you know, it's practices could be hard, so I, I try to tell them, uh, I, I went to high school in Florida, and uh, I know like basketball and football practice over there, it's five days a week. School began, uh, first class began at 7.30 in the morning, so you had practice before and after school, so um, just let them know that it, it, it's to get, to be great, to be successful, it takes a lot of hard work, and that's just a life lesson. The association is co-ed play, and Sawyer says spectators might be surprised by the level of play by some of the female players. He's encouraging more parents to get on board with the sport by allowing their kids to play, coaching, or just general support. Get your kids involved. Um, it's a great program throughout the uh, Abaco, you know, and uh, um, they can really use some help. And adults as well, you know, get out there in the community, have a hand in raising these kids, and you know, just be hands-on. Regular season is in full gear and the championships are set for February of next year. Megan Shepard, ZNS Total Sports. Well, folks, Sheena and the Dolphins told me they were going to crush the England Patriots last night. There was some crushing, all right, and it showed by my friends. They call me a Dolphin hater, but I am not a Dolphin hater. I just don't believe that they should have the Dolphins should have a big eye John on that helmet. But because I love you guys, I have something for you. Well, folks, I also need to find my frat brother, Kevin Stewart of Stat Oil. You see, Kevin just dropped uh, out of sight. Uh, come on, Bahamas, I need you to help me. Uh, he's a Dolph fan, Nick fan, and also he's my capper brother. We're all looking for him. He's disappeared. At least Sheena was brave enough to come in here today. But I'll tell you what, Dolphin fans, hey, that's the way it goes. That's a look at sports. <laughs> And on Monday, we start our week of broadcast. 9 o'clock, we'll be right here. 25 years of 25 broadcasting years. here in Grand Bahama. TV 13, celebrating in a good one. Yeah. You okay today? This is a sit of shame, let me tell you. Okay. I'm embarrassed by that game. I was calling in sick today. Okay, let's go. I was going to do it for us here in the North <laughs> on behalf of our entire city. That's new to see. Oh my God, my boy. I'm Shakina Rowe. The Bahamas Tonight continues. <laughs>